Hey, cycling friends. James with Team Finish Strong. Down here at the battlefield again on an unseasonably warm day in December. And uh, the sun has even come out a little bit here today to bless us. I'll tell you, it was supposed to be a rainy weekend, but it has turned out to be much better than expected. Just enjoying it. Well, today I want to follow up on a video I did a couple months ago on the topic of divine justice. And I think I covered that topic pretty thoroughly. Uh, you get a real sense of how serious God takes sin and how perfect and complete his justice is. Well, today I want to talk about mercy. And I guess you could say that is the opposite of justice. Or is it? Let's find out. Well, first, let me start off by saying that mercy is not the opposite of justice. And so if mercy is not the opposite of justice, what is? Well, it's kind of obvious. Injustice is the opposite of justice. Though in popular culture today, I think we sometimes conflate the two we make mercy equal to injustice. And I think we can think of some examples of that. But what I want to draw us back to is the scriptures on injustice and mercy. And I think if you do a study in scripture, you're going to see that God makes a very clear distinction between the two. So much so that he would say in times of the Old Testament, like in Micah, where he would say that we are to act justly and love mercy. We're supposed to do both. So how can one show both justice and mercy? Well, we got to take a look at the character of God to understand how we do that. Because how did God do that? Well, one of the greatest acts of both justice and mercy was found at the cross. In that one act, God both showed his justice against all sin of humankind for all time. And yet he extended his greatest act of mercy to all people everywhere for all time through that same one act. We can see that justice has both a very seriousness to it, that God had to inflict the greatest punishment of all on his own beloved son so that he could show the greatest act of mercy that ever existed. And that is to pardon us for our offenses. It's the center point, it's the linchpin it's the cornerstone of our faith, of the gospel. And it's so important to God. And it's something that should be important to us as well. The concept of both acting justly and loving mercy. So interestingly, we find ourselves at this paradoxical intersection of both justice and mercy at the cross. And that great act demands a response from us. And what response is it that God requires? Well, I think Jesus answered it so well in Matthew chapter 5 in the Sermon on the Mount when he goes on to tell us that we should love our enemies and do good to those who despitefully use us. And even to pray for those that persecute us. Now how on earth can we possibly do that? That's a tall ask. Well, you have to look at the one doing the asking. It's Jesus, the very one that secured our pardon before God. And you know, in light of that and the debt that we face before God, 
and the justice we could face from God if we don't have his mercy, I think it's not such a tall ask at all. In fact, I think it's essential because Jesus says that it is then that we become children of our Father in heaven. You see, those who we are children of, we will have their nature, their character, the fingerprint of their DNA will be in our lives. And the fingerprint of God's DNA in our life is to show mercy and act justly. This is not just a New Testament thing. This goes back to the Old Testament. God has always desired to show mercy to us, his people. And we have the great privilege and duty to show that same love to others. Now, James, the disciple of Jesus, goes even further to expound on how we should act as believers with respect to showing mercy. In fact, he goes and makes it very explicit in chapter two of his epistle that we should speak and act as those who are under the law that gives freedom because judgment without mercy will be shown to those who are not merciful. Mercy triumphs over judgment. And it truly does, folks. God's mercy will always triumph over judgment. And he demonstrated that on the cross. And in fact, James wants us to understand that it is only by God's mercy that we can stand before him. He says that if you keep the entire law, but break just one little part of it, you've broken the whole thing. You've been an adulterer, a murderer, a liar, a thief, by breaking even the smallest commandment. You see, we can't have a 99% approval rating before God on Judgment Day. It's gotta be 100%, and there's only one way we can be that righteous. It's through Jesus Christ and his act on the cross. His act of obedience cancels out the entire weight of sin that we have on our lives. And when we've been canceled of that great debt, we need to show mercy to others who, by comparison, have a much smaller debt towards us, regardless of what it is. Because you see, God is the one that's ultimately going to judge all sin. And his decisions with respect to justice are final and complete and perfect. And we leave it to him, we leave it to him to act justly on our behalf with respect to any injustice we face. And so we ought to, as those that live under the law that gives freedom, we should extend mercy in the hopes that those who, like us, are under the weight of sin might find mercy as well. Well, friends, wherever you are in the world, I hope your day is shining as bright as it is here, both in the world and in your spirits. Take care. Have a wonderful Christmas. God bless. And as always, finish strong.